If you want to create a database that corresponds to and records the transactions of some system in the real world, such as a business or other type of organization, you must enforce the same rules in the database as those that apply in the real world system. For example, if you're tracking a company's products and the product has a name in the real world, then the entry in the database for that product must also have a name. When defining the table that contains your products, you'll want to add a constraint on the product name column of the table to the effect that for every row of the table, the product name column must contain a value. The constraint that specifies that a column must contain a value is the not null constraint. You might also want to specify for the quantity in stock column that the value stored must always be equal to or greater than zero. This will prevent a salesperson from selling more product than is available. There are six constraints that you can apply to a database table to restrict entries that can be made into tables. The not null constraint assures that a null value cannot be stored in a column of a database table. The unique constraint specifies that there may be no duplicated values in a column. For example, if the unique constraint were applied to the last name column and there was already a Skywalker in the table, you would be prevented from adding another record with a last name of Skywalker. The primary key constraint assures that every row in a table is distinct from all other rows. This assurance comes from the fact that the primary key column must contain a value and that value must be unique within the column. The foreign key constraint identifies a column in a table as being linked to the primary key of another table. This link is what makes a relational database relational. The check constraint validates the value that you enter into a column against a condition that you specify. If you specify that any value entered into the quantity column must be non-negative, users will not be allowed to enter a negative value into that column. The default constraint specifies a default value for a column if no value is specified by the user. When you create a database table with SQL, the constraints that you specify enforce the business rules that apply to the real-world system that the database is patterned after. These constraints may not make a lot of sense to you now, but you'll understand the need for them in the later video when we create database tables and apply constraints to them. In this video, we've discussed modeling a system of interest according to the entity relationship model paradigm. The key components of the model are entities and relationships between them. We talked about the three kinds of binary relationships, one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many, -many, and how those relationships reflect the maximum cardinality of the link between two entities. We then talked about the transformation of an entity relationship model of entities and relationships into a relational model of tables and links. Finally, we discussed bringing the relational model closer to the real-world system that it is modeling by codifying the business rules of the real-world system into constraints in the relational model. In the next video, we'll take what we have learned about modeling to create a simple database using SQL statements to create the database structure and enter some example data into it.